so that we can have it today. Look at Psalm 119. Forever, O Lord, thy word is what? Thy word is what? Do you know that in heaven there is not a stack of Bibles? God only wrote one book. He only wrote one book. And he says there that he's, not only has he magnified his word above his own name, but forever his word is settled where? Do you understand what that means? That means that his word was settled upon in his mind before he moved any human agent to record any piece of it. Does the Bible have final authority? Look it, you can reject it. You can kick against it. You can rail against it. You can say it's full of errors and mistakes and that it's, it's not trustworthy or whatever you want to say about it. But yet it's still there. And it continues to come back. And all these folks that want to not be judged by the Bible and say the Bible's full of this, that, and the other thing, in the end day they're going to be judged by what's in that book. And that's just a fact. You know that God will give to you what you want? Romans chapter 1, they knew God, didn't they? But they glorified Him not as God. So God gave Him up, He gave Him up, He gave Him what? Over to a reprobate mind. Everybody, the majority of people in religious circles, don't they believe that God will judge them based on their works and that if they're good, God will let them into heaven? Isn't that what most people believe? Have you ever read Revelation chapter 20 where God does that exact thing with the lost? He judges them according to their what? Works in their eternal sentence is handed out to them based on their what? He gives them exactly what they want. Last. <laughs> the 66 canonical books of the Bible alone possess divine authority. I got a couple gift cards from people for uh, the holiday season uh, to Barnes & Noble, and I'm going through Barnes & Noble. You know, these things are burning a hole in my pocket, right? I just got to get another book. Like, like I have time to read it. So I'm standing there and I'm looking. I pull out this book by Alistair McGrath called Heresy. The, the History of, def, of Defending the Truth or something like that. I said, ooh, that's good. So I bought it. And the whole book is about how heresy is so prevalent and popular in our modern culture. The Da Vinci Code... Uh, Bart Ehrman's book, Misquoting Jesus, all of these things, the Gnostic Gospels, the Gospel of Judas, all of this stuff is all heresy masquerading as scholarly opinion. And none of them are in the 66 books of your what? That's why I include this as in, a, in a definitive definition of inspiration. This element is one of the distinguishing factors between evangelical and Roman Catholic views of Scripture. The 66 canonical books of the Protestant canon alone are invested with divine authority. No other source equals or surpasses that of the Scripture. The book and the Bible, the Bible and the Bible alone, excuse me, is a supremely authoritative book in matters of faith and practice. Now, next week, you have to, again, please, I am, the way I've laid this out is I'm building one message on the other. To the point where we get to the end, we'll be looking at that stack of books right there. And making some comparisons. But we got to understand God's viewpoint first. And God's viewpoint is that He inspired every single word. So much so to the point where he takes that word and he magnifies it above his own one. And where we're going to start out next Sunday is I'm going to demonstrate to you conclusively how that God's design and inspiration was to take the living word, Jesus Christ, and make it equal with the written word. Underneath the blood. You've been watching Just Grace It, a production of Grace Life Bible Church. Salvation is free. Put your faith in the shed blood of Christ as the only payment for your sins.
If you are interested in joining a community of believers who rejoice in who God has made them in Jesus Christ, call or write to us or visit us online at justgraceit.com.